So I received this DM a couple weeks ago uh, asking for advice on how to make their animations feel a little less keyframey. And it got me thinking back to when I first started uh, and a few tricks specifically that I didn't learn for years that ended up helping my animations feel a little more fluid. Um, and so I thought I'd share them with you here today. Okay, so we're now in After Effects and I'm gonna try and explain this in the simplest way possible using just a few shape layers here. We have two squares, one going just across the screen and then the second one going in a Bezier curve like this. So if we hit play, it's completely linear, doesn't look very good, doesn't have a lot of personality to it. So let's fix that. So I'm gonna turn off the blue one for now and just use the green one for a second. So if we select the two keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them, and we open up the graph editor here, and make sure we're on the speed graph here. When we select the two keyframe points here that match up with these and drag them in more to make the curve a bit more drastic and hit play, we'll see we have a bit more personality. It has more of a snappy feel, takes longer to ramp up, takes longer to slow down uh, and hits a higher peak speed. And so what we're really trying to get at here is understanding the speed graph editor intuitively. And so if we see here when it's at the first keyframe, it's moving at zero, right? Zero pixels per second. And here, right at the peak, it's moving, you know, somewhere between eight and 9,000, maybe 8,500 pixels a second. This is the fastest speed that it has, approaching down to zero again here. And so that's pretty simple, right? Just a two keyframe, you know, speed up, slow down. Now, turning back on the blue square that has this curve, if we were to try and do the same thing, so hitting F9 and opening up the speed graph editor, we'll see that we don't get the same kind of curve if we drag all the points like this. We get two separate drastic curves. So if we hit play, it comes to the middle, stops, and then starts again. And if we wanted one fluid motion from the beginning to the end without stopping in the middle, this is obviously not gonna work. So this brings us to the first trick, and that is just selecting the keyframe, right-clicking, and coming down to rove across time. And what that will basically do is if we open up the speed graph again, we see the keyframe here as a little circle, but instead of affecting the actual temporal data or the time data here, it reads only from the first and the last keyframe, but still keeps the position here. So it passes through without stopping. So if we hit play, we'll see that it has that nice snappy motion, to make it a little less drastic, passes through, but it is only reading the first and last keyframes uh, time data which is a really nice effect, right? We can then control where it goes. So if we add another keyframe here, we right click this and rove across time. You can see that if we drag this, reset it to something similar to the first one like that, we have one circle here and one circle here. So it'll pass through this point and this point, but only read the first and last keyframes time data. So if we hit play, you can see it still has similar pacing to the first square, just passing through two different keyframes. Okay, so let's say that we want this second keyframe to actually influence the time, right? We want it to come here, slow down, but not fully stop, pass through, and then continue to the final keyframe. Something a little bit different and slightly more advanced than just selecting row across time. So if we duplicate this, if we open the keyframes, I hit U to open the keyframes here, and we turn off row across time. Now we are back to where we started with just three keyframes here. If we understand that this is where there's no movement, this is where there's no movement because it's at the zero mark, and this is where there's no movement, what happens if we actually lift these keyframes up a bit and then make our curves like this? Well, before we even hit play, we can understand this on an intuitive level. It starts at zero, gets faster, faster, faster to something like 11,000 pixels a second. The specific number doesn't matter, but it gets faster and then slows down as we approach this middle keyframe. But instead of fully stopping, it keeps a velocity of about a thousand, right? It's keeping some velocity. It's basically passing through instead of stopping. And then it picks up speed again, gets faster here, right in the middle, and then comes down to zero. So if we hit play, we can see we have a fluid motion where it's passing through this point and then coming to the end. And we could even lift this higher, right? It'll do even more of a pass through. I prefer the other one, I think this looks a bit nicer, but of course it just comes down to taste and messing with the, with the graph editor. There's no specific rule to this. It's just that I didn't realize for years that you could literally just lift the point up off of zero and it helps so much. So bringing it back just to our original three squares and three keyframes here, we have just the green as reference uh, going across the screen, the blue with our rove across time keyframe, and then our red one, which is underneath the blue one with our lifted keyframe that 
passes through. So if we hit play, we can see they both last two seconds, the blue and the red, but they have a completely different feel to the animation. And what's great is that this technique can be applied to pretty much any type of keyframe. So I have a fourth square here, this time with scale instead of position. So if we open up our speed graph editor, we see it's just easy ease, nothing special. If we hit play, it really isn't that great of an animation. But if we apply the same technique where we lift our middle keyframes and then hit play, we get a kind of pass through on the scale as well, which looks, in my opinion, a lot better than something like this, where it just stops and then continues through. Maybe that's what you're looking for, but for this, that sort of pass through effect can look really nice, especially when you combine them. And so we have one more here where I just copy pasted the scale from number four, the one we just saw, and the position of the red one from earlier. And when they're both played together, we get a pass through on scale and position. Now, of course, this scale's up too big. This is just for example purposes, but you can do this with rotation. You can do this with any kind of keyframe. I found this trick most useful when building out longer sequences, especially when something needs to pass through somewhere or there's multiple keyframes from different attributes that are happening all at once. It just feels more fluid and natural than this sort of stop start, stop start animation style. I wanna add one more thing here because I think it's important to mention for keyframes that start positive, but then cross over to the negative. The trick where we had before where we lift it doesn't actually work here. And so, you know, I typically stay in the speed graph because to me it's, it's more intuitive, but for something like this, I have also found that the value graph does help a lot visualizing how the animation happens. And so we can actually tweak here. We know that it'll start slow, speed up, and then slow down to a stop here and then come back down to a rest. If we hit play, it kind of does this scale up and then back down. Um, we can tweak the handles, maybe make it a bit more extreme like this, you know, just mess with the handles like this and we can get this kind of stop and settle sort of feeling, which if we go back to the speed graph, looks pretty similar. I, again, I prefer using this, but it really comes down to personal preference and, and what you prefer using. So before we wrap up here, I wanna show a real world example of how I actually use these tricks in real projects. And so I have here the After Effects project file for the Frida Kahlo video on Athena Drew's channel, specifically this clip where he's reading out a letter written by Frida. Opening up here, I have a pre-comp with the full letter um, that she wrote, but specifically we're highlighting the text as he reads it. And so looking through, this is all trim paths, animations on shape layers that have some roughening effects on them. What we're focusing on though, is the actual keyframes of these trim paths. So if I open one of them and we come into the keyframes for the end animation, which is how the trim paths actually animates out, and we open up the speed graph editor, you can see it's very similar to what we did in the last project file with the squares, where it doesn't actually come to a full stop as it passes through. Because he's not reading perfectly linear, no one does, right? And so having it pass through, kind of slow down at certain spots, but not completely stop and then pick up, makes the animation feel a lot more natural. So if we hit play here, even though it's on quarter quality, you can see that it passes through, doesn't fully stop, and then picks up speed again as it continues the sentence. And that's all there really is to this trick. It really just comes down to trying to understand the speed graph a little bit more intuitively. Um, so hopefully this helps out in any of your future animations. And of course, if you have any other questions like this, feel free to leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram and I'll do my best to help. Okay, see you soon.